Now one type of dipole-dipole interaction we might envision is between a partially positive hydrogen atom connected to a relatively electronegative atom X, something like nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, and a nearby nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom that is partially negative. This, on the surface, just looks like a dipole-dipole interaction, and when hydrogen is involved, it is particularly called a hydrogen bond or hydrogen bonding interaction, this purple dotted line. But hydrogen bonds are sort of on another level. If you look at the strengths of these intermolecular forces as opposed to dipole-dipole forces in, say, something like CO, like we saw in the practice problem, or acetone, molecules without these XH groups, you find that these are much stronger than plain vanilla dipole-dipole forces. That really sets hydrogen bonding interactions apart from dipole-dipole forces. They are profoundly stronger than your run-of-the-mill dipole-dipole force. The reason for this has to do with the fact that there is an element of covalent bonding to hydrogen bonding interactions. There's actual orbital overlap between the orbital associated with the non-bonding lone pair on the X atom, and here X is that electronegative atom, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, and the sigma anti-bonding orbital of the XH bond. That orbital overlap, which is depicted right here, gives an element of electron sharing or covalency to hydrogen bonds and increases their strength since electrons are being shared and that's a stabilizing kind of bonding interaction. So water is famous for its hydrogen bonds and this figure in the center of the slide depicts hydrogen bonding in water between water's oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Although these are drawn at an angle because of the covalency built into hydrogen bonds, the ideal arrangement is the linear one shown here, with the two X atoms and the central hydrogen all collinear like this. And lastly, I'll just mention, since I haven't said it yet, hydrogen bonds are only relevant for NH, OH, and FH bonds. So nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine can participate in hydrogen bonding interactions when they're connected to a hydrogen, in what's called the hydrogen bond donor, the thing that is donating the H in a sense, or as the hydrogen bond acceptor with a lone pair that interacts with a different XH bond. This graph provides some evidence that oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine are special when it comes to hydrogen bonding. We may ask, for example, why not sulfur? That's just one step down from oxygen in the periodic table. Why not phosphorus? Why can't these elements hydrogen bond? Well, the proof is kind of in the pudding if you look at boiling points. For example, just based on London forces and polarizability, we would expect the boiling point of water to be lower than that of H2S. We would expect this curve to continue moving down as we got to lighter and lighter elements going from H2SE to H2S to H2O. It doesn't. The boiling point shoots way, way up. There's something very different about the intermolecular forces in H2O relative to H2S. And the same observation is made if we look at HF relative to the other halogens and NH3 relative to the other group 15 elements. These three hydrides are much, much harder to boil than they should be based on simple arguments related to polarizability and London forces and dipole-dipole interactions, to be honest. This is telling us that the forces going on here are way beyond plain vanilla dipole-dipole forces and are really best called hydrogen bonds, something completely different. In this problem, we're given three boiling points and three compounds, dimethyl ether, ethanol, and propane, and asked to match the compounds to the boiling points, explaining our reasoning along the way. So here, really, we're sort of doing a comparison of boiling points problem just in disguise, right? Wrapped up in this idea of here are some numbers, match up the numbers with the compounds. So we still need to follow this chain of reasoning from the Lewis structure through to the dominant intermolecular force. Once we've figured out the dominant IMFs and their relative strengths, we can correlate that with the relative boiling points, reasoning that the strongest IMFs will be associated with the greatest or highest boiling point. So let's do that for these compounds whose Lewis structures are a little bit more involved. So here's dimethyl ether, two CH3 groups on either side of a central oxygen, kind of reminiscent of water in a way. Here is methanol, CH3, connected to an O, connected to an H. And actually, I drew out methanol. This should be ethanol. I will fix that up a little bit later, but the argument's going to apply equally well to methanol or ethanol. And then finally, we have propane, which just has three carbons in a row with hydrogens linked to the carbons like you see here. 
So the geometries in all cases, we don't actually need to list. We can just go straight to the polarities and we see that the dimethyl ether and the methanol or ethanol would be polar. The propane is essentially nonpolar with only nonpolar covalent bonds in its structure. And so the dominant IMS then are dipole-dipole interactions here. London dispersion forces here, but hydrogen bonding interactions in the ethanol. Hydrogen bonding because we have the OH group in there. So the oxygen of one alcohol molecule can interact with the H of another alcohol molecule, and that is a hydrogen bonding interaction. So these are the dominant IMFs. Now we're reasoning about relative strengths with the strongest being hydrogen bonding. Remember, hydrogen bonding interactions are on another level from dipole-dipole forces, and the London forces are the weakest. So this tells us that the lowest boiling compound, negative 42.1, will be the propane. The dimethyl ether, which does have a dipole moment, will show up in the middle, and the ethanol will have the highest boiling point. And this is the boiling point of ethanol, not methanol, whose Lewis structure just has an extra CH2 group thrown in there relative to what I had on the slide. So a bit of a different style of problem, but still at the end of the day, this is a comparison of boiling points and comparison of intermolecular forces type of problem.